All right, hello and welcome to Camel Finance. I'm your boy Camel and today I'm going to be talking a little bit about Bitcoin, of course. I also want to show you some very, very bullish charts. I still continue to find a bearish chart out there. I am also going to be throwing one or two outside the box ideas or slightly outside the box. They're not, they're not too outside the box. And I'm also going to be talking about uh, a little bit of gold and traditional finance. So in the meantime, sit back, relax, hit that like button and let's get into this. First of all, okay, this is a somewhat outside the box idea or somewhat uncommon opinion. And that is that the plan B stock to flow model is actually doing just fine. Now, many, many people were very quick, and I've said this a bunch of times, to call this model completely broken when we deviated to the downside. But as I have pointed out repeatedly, nobody had a problem when we deviated to the upside any of these times here, right? So anyway, long story short, we are now back, okay? We are now back to the stock to flow model in gray, okay? Notice the blue dot at the hard right edge tells us to keep an open mind, doesn't it? About continuing to see stock to flow things. Remember, this line right here is 100K and this line right here is a million. So I dub all of this neighborhood as the party zone. I'll preface this by saying this is going to be a little bit of a trigger warning, but again, slightly outside the box idea. And my slightly outside the box idea that, by the way, I am happy to be proven wrong about is that we're actually not going to get a Ethereum ETF. I know we've had the Bitcoin ETF. I have been of the opinion we do not see an Ethereum ETF approved. And I found this, which kind of feeds in to my narrative. It kind of fits my own bias, okay? Because Jim Cramer here has said that given the success of Bitcoin's ETF, it's pretty obvious that an Ethereum ETF will soon bloom. So if I was a betting man, would I want to take the same tide of the trade as Jim Cramer? No, I would not. So of course, this is anecdotal, okay? Of course, this doesn't really mean anything. And as I said a million times before, I am happy to be proven wrong if that is the case. But if I was somebody betting on an Ethereum ETF, this is something that would not exactly fill me with confidence. And from Ethereum to Bitcoin, okay, Bitcoin is about to close the largest dollar gain on a monthly candle in its history. We have officially closed this candle now, okay? Take a look at this, a $20,000 monthly candle. February has been the most bullish month of Bitcoin's entire existence. And the charts of Bitcoin continue to improve. The two month super trend has flipped green. We have confirmed a L MACD bull cross and the Bollinger Bands are also expanding. Okay, so you can see that here, here and here. We also have apparently set a second angle of attack. Uh, long time viewers of the channel will be more than familiar with this. We have this first angle down here. Second angle appears to be being set and typically a parabola finishes with a third near vertical angle. For now, as you can see from Tony the Ball, targeting the 1.618 Fib extension gives us just shy of 160K Bitcoin. Not too shabby, if you ask me. There is on-chain support for higher Bitcoin prices as well in the form of the MVRV. Last time we were at this level, it was the start of a cycle uptrend in November of 2020 with Bitcoin at just 16.7K. The price rose 2.4X in under two months. If you speculate the same thing will occur, that puts us just over 150K by April of this year. I've been saying it over and over and over again. People are not ready. People cannot comprehend that Bitcoin can indeed do Bitcoin things. Remember, Bitcoin is the bull of all bulls. This is what it does. Meanwhile, I've seen anecdotally one or two of you in the comments talking to me about how your normie friends out in the wild are starting to message you and are starting to show a little bit of interest. But as one of my good friends, Steve, pointed out, even though they're interested now, they're going to need to see another 200% price increase before they're ready to hit that buy button. And again, anecdotally, we can kind of see this here in the Google search volume for Bitcoin. Slight uptick, but retail is nowhere even close to entering this market yet. Like I said, we're going to need another 200% gain, and then we should start to see this at the hard right edge. If we take a look at Bitcoin's weekly RSI, it's near its final stage, the cycle top zone. So when the RSI enters this zone, the top has come within a year. In under one year, we're almost there, but we're not quite it's important that the weekly RSI closes inside. All-time highs have been a stiff resistance point in previous cycles. The barrier to an accelerated cycle according to weekly RSI is just inches away. So if we zoom into this chart and take a good look, okay, this upper zone here, the cycle top zone, as CryptoCon has termed it, we are just about to enter that zone. Now, that does not mean the moment we touch it, we have to reject and price has to do this. Typically, we can remain overbought for longer than people are, generally speaking, ready for. So are we going to see something like this that corresponds with a parabola? Yes, that is what I have been speculating for some time now. And if we look left and ask what happened historically when we did something like this, 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 or this, or even these, you can see very good things happened to the price of Bitcoin walking forward 
This time we didn't get into that neighborhood and that of course was an early lower high parabola. And then here we did get into that overbought zone, that cycle top zone, and of course Bitcoin did Bitcoin things. So overall, again, it's yet another chart that tells us to keep an open mind about better than expected outcomes for Bitcoin walking forward. And as if we needed more bullish charts, We've got the Bollinger Bands now starting to accelerate to the downside, okay? With the upper Bollinger Bands starting to curl to the upside. Usually when we see this, as you can see right here and here and like here and here, as you can see by the candlesticks, very good things happen to the price of Bitcoin walking forward. Again, I'm saying the same thing over and over again, but with so many people out there on Twitter calling for a triple top or a double top or an ABC back down to the lows before the true bull market can start, I have to show you these charts and say, are you sure about that? Okay, are you sure about that? Because for months and months and months, I have been saying this, if prices to unfold in a parabola as I've been expecting it to do so, by the time we're up in this neighborhood, we are gonna be able to look back with hindsight and say, this was probably one of the most obvious trades ever. There has not been a bearish chart out there in many, many months. Even since down at the lows, this cycle started to display bullishness that we have not seen characteristically in the prior cycles. So once again, all right, it's right until it's wrong. If we continue up, then we're going to continue up. And it really is that simple. We don't have to overthink it sometimes. Again, even more bullishness because February's monthly close was above 60K. Okay, take a look at that. So we're now into price discovery. In theory, March's candle should close significantly higher. If that 20K candle is anything to go by, you know, we could be at 80, 90, even 100K within no time. Buckle up, boys, is absolutely correct. And as I was kind of alluding to yesterday, I know a bunch of people are somewhat unable to handle the fire. And by the fire, I mean the volatility in the crypto related equities, but breathe a sigh of relief, okay? First of all, if you remember, we're gonna be doing a deep dive tomorrow as always. And of course, we'll spend a great deal of time going over the miners. But it's important to point out, as Henrik here has pointed out, Bitcoin is in the blue and in the orange is Marathon, okay? Which just represents one of these crypto miners. Note the lack, okay? Bitcoin goes on full bore bullish parabola, first pullback, and it's not until that first pullback, or just before, that Marathon actually starts to enter a parabola, and at that point it catches up. It's the same thing that we're observing today. Bitcoin has gone full bore parabola, first pullback, and is now starting to move higher, and Marathon is just lagging a little bit behind. So something like this to be expected and normal? Yes, I think so. If you are sweating the miners, I would honestly say don't sweat them too much. It's far too early to be sweating them. And last but not least, before we check in on a few charts, I wanted to talk about gold. For a long time, okay, I had a yellow squiggle on this chart that said, this is what I thought would happen, something like this, and then a rollover. That squiggle played out just fine. And I changed the squiggle of late to say, this is what I expect to happen. Pull back, daily cycle low, counter trend bounce, roll over into a daily and weekly cycle. I've been talking about going short here for a long, long time, okay? Now, as of yesterday, I decided, I think it's time to execute a short. And so I did indeed take a short. I posted it in the community tab for the members. And within less than an hour, we got PCE data come out and gold start to reverse violently. So I quickly cut this trade. I said to the members, look, it's better to take one, two, three point loss here and walk away rather than just let this thing come flying out of here. Because we also have to be open to the fact that perhaps what we've got is a weekly cycle low that has started from here. Now that would be early, but it wouldn't be so early as that we couldn't qualify it as an early weekly cycle low. This here, here, or here would all be in the normal and to be expected timing window for a weekly cycle. So I still kind of, for some reason, don't trust this move. I don't believe now is the time for, for gold to break out. But undeniably, if we're gonna do something like this, okay, pull back into that daily cycle low and go, then I can buy the all-time high break, right? I can get long and target 2300, 2200 conservatively. But something in my water, something deep down inside of me is telling me that we do indeed need to roll over into this daily and weekly cycle low and that we have yet to see it. Now, I've drawn this blue downward sloping resistance line. You know, if we continue to break above this, then the thing is still bullish, right? So for now, I'm out the way, but I kind of, I would be more surprised if we did this over the next week or so than if we did something like this, okay? That would make much more sense to me. So I'm still kind of sitting here neutral. I'm still not got a position. Like I said, we opened one very briefly and then I decided, no, let's pull the plug. Let's sit on the sides and wait, see what happens. And I am still looking for a short. I'm still leaning more like we need to have a flush and a decline before we can go. As always, I'll continue to update you. Another reason I think we need to see this flush is the Bitcoin to gold ratio. So you can see from my Twitter account that I first proposed this back in the 14th of November. And 
as you can see from this, we had only put in this tiny little bit of a leg. And I said, this kind of makes sense in terms of expecting the weekly cycle to roll over and break down for gold and expecting Bitcoin to do Bitcoin things. So fast forward to today and you can see we're approaching the halfway mark for this fractal. OK, we are approaching the halfway mark. Now, keep in mind, if this is going to continue to play out, then we should expect some relative weakness from gold. Now, that doesn't mean gold couldn't go up and Bitcoin could just go up significantly faster. But for me, the way I'm looking at this is it makes sense to me that Bitcoin enters price discovery and this is further fueled by that rollover into that weekly cycle low for gold. Like I said, it's not so early in gold cycle that we couldn't mark the current daily cycle as the weekly cycle. That would certainly be a legal and qualifying cycle, but it just makes the most sense to me if this thing is going to continue to play out, which I believe it is, then we should see one more flush of gold. Now, it doesn't have to go very low or it could go very low, right? If it really is the final flush before a new bull market for gold, then it would make sense that we flush all the sentiment, make everyone capitulate, throw their gold away and move to something else like Bitcoin. And of course, all of this should fuel this fractal to play out. If, of course, it does, as I keep saying over and over again, I think this is an excellent way to exit some of the Bitcoin into gold, ready for gold's true weekly cycle and true bull market, where we should expect to see gold overperform Bitcoin in the short to medium term. If we get back down here or anywhere close to it, of course, I will be interested in reacquiring some Bitcoin, especially if that coincides with the expected four year cycle low for Bitcoin. So with all of that said, hopefully you can see this idea. Now, I know it's not a popular idea. I know a lot of, I know a lot of people are saying, yeah, but the dollar's going to break down and, you know, why would gold not go up? And maybe I'm completely flat wrong, right? But like I said, everything I've shown you so far, that's how I'm thinking about it. The data is the data, right? The idea is the idea. And as traders and investors, we get things right and we get things wrong, okay? It's not about being right or wrong. It's just about staying on the right side of the trade. For now, it's definitely good not to be short, okay? <laughs> we would have been losing money if we stayed short. So that's fine. And, you know, Bitcoin is still doing Bitcoin things. And, you know, if that Bitcoin to gold ratio is going to play, we'll have an exit strategy. So as ever, one day at a time, see what the market can give. The stock market seems to be confirming that we have indeed got an early cycle low. And given where the weekly cycle is, kind of tells me to expect a top to come in the not too distant future, followed by a rollover into that daily and weekly cycle low. So I'm looking out for this. I also suspect the fact that we're getting late in this weekly cycle is also responsible in part for some of the relative weakness we're seeing in the crypto stocks. In a way, I would kind of like to see Marathon roll over one last time and get a back test of this blue range breakout. And if that was the case, then I'd be interested in adding along. And of course, if you remember, I'll notify you of that. Either way though, being patient seems to be the right call so far. And so as ever, we just continue to take this one day at a time, right? We continue to have full transparency over the trades and we continue to just stay on the right side of the market based on TA alone. Tomorrow is, of course, Saturday. And Saturday, we like to do a bit more of a deep dive. I'm going to be taking a look at inflation and interest rates and that kind of thing, seeing if we can figure out what's going on there. And of course, we'll be spending more time looking for new positions and trade setups going into the week ahead. There also, as I said a couple of times already, I think will be a members only video. So if you're a member, I know there's a few new members. Look out for that on Saturday. Everyone else, hit that like button if you made it this far. Hit that subscribe button. This channel is starting to explode in growth now, which is really nice to see. So hello and welcome to all of the new members. Thank you to all the OGs and channel triple OGs. In the meantime, I hope you're doing well in life. Take care from me. Have a fantastic weekend. I'm your boy Camel. Until next time, peace.